continued for what seemed an eternity, a small community of farmers was in a quandary as to what to do. Rain was important to keep their crops healthy and sustain the townspeople's way of life. As the problem became more acute, a local pastor called a prayer meeting to pray for rain. Many people arrived at the church to pray for the needed rain. The pastor greeted most of them as they filed in. And as he walked to the front of the church to officially begin the meeting, he noticed most people were chatting across the aisles and socializing with friends. When he reached the front, his thoughts were on quieting the attendees and starting the meeting. His eyes scanned the crowd as he asked for quiet. He noticed an 11-year-old girl sitting quietly on the front row, her face beaming with excitement. Next to her, open and ready for use, was a very colorful and extremely large umbrella. The little girl's beauty and innocence made the pastor smile as he realized how much faith she possessed. No one else in the congregation that brought an umbrella all came to pray but the little girl came expecting God to answer just wanted to throw that one out at you <laughs> Romans 8 chapter 8 verse 28 Romans 8 28 and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are the called according to his purpose. And we know. Except, well, it doesn't say that in there, does it? Oh, excuse me. And we know. So, do we really believe it? Do we really believe those words? Especially when you get up early in the morning, you go into the office and start the coffee, and while that's brewing, you turn your computer on, open your Bible, you know, you just want to start the day out right, spend some one-on-one -on -time, one -on -one time with God. You get up, pour a nice cup of can you smell it yet? <laughs> <laughs> and you go to sit it down on your desk, and your cup catches the edge of your keyboard, and it spills all over. <laughs> your desk, your Bible, <laughs> your keyboard, your chair, and of course your pants. <laughs> You're upset. It's hard to keep things in perspective. And we know. Even after that. Anyone here ever do that? Many times. <laughs> Let me try one more. <laughs> You've been planning a vacation. You get the time off. You get the family in the car, the kids in the car. You're on the second day of the trip. You're going to the beach. You stay in a motel. On the second day on the trip, spending the night in the motel, you wake up in the middle of the night because one of the kids is sick. You've only got five days for your trip. It'll take two or three days for the flu to run its course. What do you do? And we know. And we know when God interrupts our plans. Has God ever interrupted your plans before? That's really what we have here is in these illustrations, the first, this man wanted to start his day off. I'm not going to say it's me. You guys didn't yeah. think it was me, did you? Spilling <laughs> the coffee? 
This man wanted to start his day with some alone time with God. What happened was a total interruption of his plans. Do you ever feel like your best plans are interrupted? Our lives are filled with interruptions, with inconveniences, with frustrations, with unexpected events. The car breaks down, accidents happen, and then the phone rings at the worst possible time. <laughs> a few years back, someone had an emergency in their life and they called me. I needed to go. About the time I hang up the phone call from that individual, another individual calls. They had an emergency. They had a crisis going on and they needed me to come. I needed to go. I felt torn. What do I do? The catch was I couldn't do them both. And I knew somebody was going to get upset at me. No matter which way I turned, I could not win. And I came back to Romans 8, 28. And we know. And we know. I had to rest in the knowledge of what the scripture says. And we know. Yes, you're right. I went to one and the other one was upset. But I knew that I was still in God's plan. I knew that he had everything under control. Because I know, you getting the point by now? I know God directs my steps. These interruptions are unexpected. And they catch us off guard. They're not random. They're not meaningless. And I believe they are divinely placed in our path for a reason. God uses these to help us to grow in Him. To become more like Him. And it's these kinds of moments where our faith is stretched. He stretches us. And we ask ourselves, do we really believe that God can give us the strength to make it through the day? Do we really believe that God is in control when all of these interruptions are happening in our life? How many of you are planners? <laughs> you like to plan. You like to get things together. You like to know what you're going to be doing. Well, you may not put those plans on paper, but you have plans. You make plans, and then they get interrupted. Matthew chapter 9, beginning with verse 18, tells a story. While Jesus spoke, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but if you come and lay your hands on her, she will live. So Jesus headed to the home of this ruler. And his disciples were going with him. And suddenly, any of you ever have suddenlies happen in your life? And suddenly, there was a lady who had a flow of blood for 12 years. She came from behind Jesus and touched the hem of his garment. She had said to herself, if only I could touch him, if only I could touch his garment, I'll be made well. First, that word suddenly. Suddenly, she came out of nowhere. And guess what? Interrupted Jesus' plan. <coughs> Interrupted what Jesus was doing. Because you remember the ruler? He was on his way to meet with the ruler's daughter. She had died. And he wanted, to, he wanted Jesus to come and raise her from the dead. 
There's a very important thing going on here in his life. Jesus had a life-changing appointment with this ruler. And then, suddenly, there comes an interruption. She got in the way of what Jesus was already doing. She stopped the motion, the forward motion of what he had planned to do. How would you feel if Jesus was doing something exciting in your life and someone jumps in the middle and stops what's going on? Someone gets in the way of what God is doing for you because they want God to do something for them. How would you feel? Jesus had things to do. He had people to see, places to go. She knew she was interrupting an important man doing important things. And this woman was not on Jesus' to-do list for that day. She figured if I could sneak up behind him, that's all she wanted to do is sneak up behind him, I'll touch his garment, I'll be healed, and nobody will know any different, and I'll be on my way. Okay. But Jesus turned around and saw her and said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. You see, to Jesus, it, it wasn't an interruption. To Jesus, it wasn't an inconvenience. And after this, Jesus went on to the ruler's house, and the ruler's daughter was healed also. When we have our interruptions, what do we do? How do we react? How do we respond when those interruptions come in our life? And I want us to keep this thing in mind. Nothing is an, is an interruption to God who planned it. And we, come on, help me out. No, no. And we, no, no, no. Acts chapter 16, verse 6. Paul had plans to go to preach in Asia. And the Bible says they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to go. Paul had plans. Jesus had other plans for him. There's an interruption in his life at that time. Paul's life wound up taking a detour, but God knew what his plans were. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, I'm going to ask a pretty bold question here. Are you willing to allow God to interrupt your life? And your immediate thought, I'm going to answer that part of that for you, is probably God can do whatever He wants, whatever He wants. But I ask that because you can choose to accept his interruption and all that goes with it or we can choose to reject his interruption in our life and just go a different direction and you can say thanks but no thanks God I think I'll pass on this one and some of you are probably thinking I'm awful crazy about now some of you already know I am <laughs> But God won't, God allows you to have a sovereign will. God never forces his will on us. Mary, the mother of Jesus, facing an uncertain future. Who would believe?
believe her story. Now, I'm not going to go through the story right now, but who would believe her? And in Luke chapter 1, verse 38, Mary said this, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. As one person would say, that kind of gives me God bumps. Let it be to me according to your word. Let it be to me. I pray that all of us would have that same attitude as Mary. God, I want to be in your will. I want to be doing what you want to me to do in my life. Whether it's an interruption or not, because I, I don't know what your thoughts are for my life, but I want to be in your will. One of the greatest blessings we as Christians can experience is God's interruption in our life. God's interruption means he wants to speak new truth in your heart or to lead us in a new direction. We may think we've got it all planned out and we are going down the pathway that we think God wants us to do and he interrupts us like he interrupted Paul and said, I want you to go this way, not that way. God, I want your will in my life. God's interruption means we're not forgotten. It means we're not forsaken. It means that we're not an afterthought to God. He has chosen you and I to do something specifically designed by Him. I get excited when I think about stuff like that. He wants you, He wants me to do something specifically designed by Him for us. What do you think? Anyone ever here, anyone here ever feel like you're in a rut? You're doing the same thing day in and day out. It never changes. You're in a routine. You, you just know what's going to happen. Living life, doing the same thing over and over. Allowing God to interrupt your life can change you from just living day by day to living each day ready for an encounter with God. I want that to sink in just for a minute. Living each day to experience an encounter with the one that made you, with the creator of the universe. You get excited about something like that? Remember the 12 disciples? Of course you do. Their lives were all interrupted from their different occupations, their lifestyle. Abraham's life was interrupted when he was 75 years old and again when he was 100 years old. But when God told him to leave his country, God says, Abraham, I want you to pick up your bags and I want you to set out on a journey and I'm going to tell you where it is, when you, where you're going when you get there. How many of you here are that adventurous? <laughs> How many are that adventurous? You want to just go? No, I like to plan. Yeah, you can't do that to me. I want to plan. You've got to tell me where I'm going. You've got to tell me when I'm going to get there. You need to tell me what I need to take with me. What do you think? God says, no, I want you to go. And I'm going to tell you when you get there. Ask another bold question. Does God want to interrupt our church? Oh, he's a pastor. I like our church. Everything's going just fine. It's comfortable here. The story is told in Mark chapter 2. Jesus had entered a town called Capernaum. And the word that spread had spread that Jesus was in the house. And immediately, many people came together so that there wasn't even standing room 
inside the house. And including outside the house. The houses in those days had a, like a lot of our houses had, a fence around them. And every place on the outside of the fence, or on the outside of the house, was jam-packed with people. Four men came, brought a friend on a cot. It was paralyzed. They'd heard the stories of what Jesus could do and what he had been doing. They'd heard he was in the house. They knew that he was performing miracles in the area. Well, he was in the house now. And let's just say the people in the story were having church with Jesus. They were gathered together in a packed house. And Jesus was doing the teaching. <clears throat> and we know that it's every word that came out of his mouth was life-changing. So if there is ever any church service that shouldn't be interrupted, it would have been this one. These four men heard that Jesus did miracles. They brought their friend to the healer. Unfortunately, there was a problem. There was an interruption in their plans. And when they could not get near Jesus because of the crowd, they had to get up to the roof. Climbed up to the... Can you picture four guys trying to take a guy on a cot up to the roof? Now, in our, in our minds, we're thinking, oh, man, he's got to go up a ladder. Or they've got to go up a ladder. Well, that's not quite how it happened, but it was an inconvenience. It was an interruption to their plans. And they had to go up onto the roof. And they removed the roof above him. Can you imagine what the owner of that house was thinking? Get off my roof. Don't, don't poke a hole in my roof. What do you think the odds would be to tear a hole in the roof of a packed house and be just directly above Jesus? And then they let the man down. These four men faced interruptions in their quest to get their friend to Jesus. First, the massive crowd. Second, getting their friend on the roof. Third, tearing the roof off in just the right spot. But these men were intent on seeing their friend healed. Talk about a major interruption in this church. Now remember, Jesus is the teacher right now. Can you imagine that everything came to a screeching halt inside that house? When somebody starts tearing the roof off? But could you imagine if this happened in church today? What would you do sitting there this morning if somebody in the house was back, somebody starts coming through the roof? What do you think you'd do? I would be so bold as to ask, could it happen in the church today? What do you think? This should be an everyday occurrence in the church with this interruption. Jesus didn't get irritated. He didn't call for security. And we know how the story goes. But what I want to look at is and what I want us to be challenged by is how Jesus responds to the faith of these four crazy friends. How do you think God would respond to your faith if you were one of those crazy friends? 
Now, I, I'm not trying to say that to be disrespectful of those four guys. They were challenged, and they had a mission that they wanted to see their friend you. But you and I, in this, in this day and age, would think that they're crazy. Yes, I did say crazy. The climbing on the roof, breaking through and lowering down a paralyzed man is crazy in the natural. But these men put their faith into action. They believed what God could do. But they didn't get the chair and just sit down and say, I know God can do that. I know God can heal. <clears throat> Friend, you're just, you're just going to have to sit there. I ain't doing anything about it. No. They put their faith into action. They took their man to Jesus. And he was healed. So are we as a church interruptible? I don't want to scare you when I hear, but are we? Are we longing for and desiring to see a supernatural interruption in how we do things? Are we longing and desiring to see more from God in our lives? I pray we are. I've personally seen several miracles within our church in the last couple of months. But I want all of us seeing and experiencing that in our everyday lives. I want all of us seeing it happening every day in our lives. You don't have to be in church to see a miracle happen. I think of Chris works at the grocery store in Redway. Just praying for people in line. Now, I don't know, but uh, I don't know what management says about that, but she does it. She's not afraid of it. She's witness to people in line while she's checking them out. She has a captive audience. <laughs> And she doesn't hesitate to tell people about the Lord. It's pretty amazing when we get to see what Jesus taught come to life before our very eyes. I may preach about, I might talk about, and I might tell you about all these miracles that he's performed, but are we seeing them in our everyday lives, in our church, on a daily basis? And I've talked a lot about interruptions this morning. <coughs> when I talk to people about God's healing power and share testimonies of what I have seen God do, I'm told, Pastor, you can't get people's hopes up. <coughs> you know it's not possible. Excuse me? <coughs> I know what God can do firsthand. Some of you know what God can do firsthand. Others of you have not experienced that. And you need to. You need to believe what God can do. You don't need to understand. I'm not just up here telling you stories. I'm telling you what I know God can do in your life. Don't get their hopes up. If you're one who prays, I pray your faith be renewed and begin again praying for miracles for the supernatural to happen. And those things in your life that you need to see something happen, 
in somebody else's life as people come to you and, and say, would you please pray for me? I'm going to tell you one simple story. It happened just a few days ago. I had a gentleman that his vehicle had broken down. He says, I don't know what to do. I don't have the money. I don't know what to do. I don't know how this can happen. And I don't know if it's my clutch that went out, if it's my transmission went out. But I need help. Would you pray? Yeah, I'll pray. Now, how many of you believe I can fix vehicles? Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, sometimes, God can just deal with it himself. Other times, God will place somebody in that person's path to deal with it. We pray. I talked with him in the parking lot in his vehicle this morning. He was smiling. He was excited. God had provided a means to see that vehicle get fixed. You say, why do you pray for something like that? Just call a mechanic. I got directed a mechanic to him. You know I'm not a mechanic. <laughs> You know that. <clears throat> and I said, man, I, I don't know who to call and to send, but let's pray. God took care of it. Believe you will see what you have heard about and you have talked about. Let's refresh our prayers. Let's refresh how we think and begin asking God for incredible things once again. I want our church life to be interrupted in the sense that I've been talking about this morning. We have seen some incredible things. Trust me, God's not done and He has only just begun. Let's pray.